What's going on everybody, Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another quick video for you. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make Doctor Strange's shield inside Vegas FX. I did a tutorial a little bit ago on how to make Doctor Strange's portal, but I also teased about the shield as well inside that cinematic video. So today we're going to learn how to do that completely from scratch inside Vegas FX. And don't forget, I give all of my assets and project files of the cool stuff I do to my supporters. And my supporters include patrons and Twitch subscribers. You can become a patron for only a dollar a month. It's really, really cheap and it really helps me out. Or you can become a Twitch subscriber for free if you have Amazon Prime. And all the information is in the description below. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is open up Vegas FX. Then we're going to click the new composite shot down at the bottom. And then we're going to change the width to 1080. So it's going to be a perfect square, 1080 by 1080. Let's change the duration to something like 15 seconds and then hit OK. From here, let's go to new layer and then we're just going to call this one shield plane. Scroll down on the mouse wheel a little bit to zoom out and then go ahead and take the circular mask tool. Get your mouse as close as you can to the top left point. Click and drag it and then release your mouse at the bottom right point as close as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but once you've done, you've created a circle mask. Now click the selection tool and then we're going to drag the scale of this smaller so we have some room around the sides. Once you're done with that, select the mask on the timeline, hold control and then press the letter D on the keyboard and that's going to duplicate it. On the duplication, go over to where it says add and change that drop down to subtract. And that's going to be a subtraction mask. And if we drag the scale down a little bit, it's going to make our line right here and that's the border, the edge of our shield. Now if you have any letters or zodiac signs or something like that, go ahead and drag them into your bin and then drag them onto the top of your timeline and let's scale this to the edge. Drag the corner and then scale it to as much as you want. Once you're done with that, go back down to your second mask that you made and then hold control D and duplicate it again. Change the subtract to add now and then grab a corner and drag it inward to where you can see the letters that you have. And if you haven't guessed already, we're going to be doing this duplication and then changing to subtract and add a lot. Duplicate your bottom mask again, change it to subtract, and then scale it down a little bit. And that's going to create the lines. Do this a few more times until you're happy with it. And then let's go ahead and do another shape. Make sure your shield plane is selected. Go up to the mask and choose the square mask. Move your mouse cursor to the uppermost left point you can. And then drag it down to the bottom most right point. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once you've let go, you've made a square mask. Let's do the selection tool and then scale it down. And let's fit it right inside your innermost circle. Once you're done with that, select your bottommost mask, Control D to duplicate it, change the add to subtract, and then scale down a little bit. Now let's go ahead and duplicate these bottommost two masks, and we're going to keep these shapes the same. We're just going to rotate them 45 degrees. And you can do that by going down to Transform, and then going to Rotation, selecting the right number, and choosing 45. Do that with your first mask, the add mask, and then do that again with your subtract mask. And this will give us a cool little design. Now you could add more things in the center here for more design or unique purposes, but we're just going to go with this basic part just to show you how to do it. So I want to make these squares rotate as well. So down under transform or rotation, make sure your cursor is set on the beginning of the timeline and then click the circle to add a keyframe. Drag your cursor all the way to the end of the timeline and then change the rotation completion number to two. Do that for both the add and subtract of the first square and then go to the add and subtract of the second square and let's create a keyframe rotation and then drag it to the very end. But instead of two, we're going to put negative two. Do that again for both the add and subtract of the second square's mask. If done correctly, you should make a cool little design like this. Once you're done, let's go ahead and make this a composite shot. So select everything in your timeline, right click, and then click make composite shot. Rename it whatever you want. I'm going to call it shield and letters. And then you'll see it appear at the bottom tab down there. Now if we click composite shot one. We're going to see our shield and letters but we're only going to see that as one solid object. So we can edit this composite shot and add effects to it and it'll apply it to everything inside of that composite shot. It makes it a little bit easier to organize and add effects to specific things. So let's go to effects and then we're going to search for glow. Drag the standard glow onto your shield and letters composite shot and then we're going to change your intensity to 1.5. Then go down to your radius and turn that to 15 pixels. Select your blend mode and change that to add. Then for your per channel intensity, let's change the red to 2. Let's go to the green and change that to 1.5. And let's make the blue 0. This is going to give it a nice orangish yellow look. Collapse it and we're going to actually duplicate the glow. So select glow and then hold control, press D on the keyboard. Open up any one of them, it doesn't matter. And we're going to change some settings in the second glow. 
for the intensity, we're going to actually change that to 0.7. Then we're going to go down to the radius and change that to 250 so it can be really vibrant. Go down to the per channel intensity. We're going to keep the red to 2. Change the green to 0.5 and change the blue to 0. And this is going to give it more of a reddish orange aura. That looks pretty cool to me. So next, we're going to look for an effect, but we're going to be looking in the distort folder. So if you go down there and open that up, you'll see a few different distortions, energy, fluid, and heat. You can use any one of these you want, but energy looks the best to me. So I'm going to drag and drop that onto my composite shot, and it's going to create it more of an electric, not full look. It's going to make it look really nice to me. You can adjust any of the settings in this energy distortion to make it look more authentic to you, but I'm going to keep the settings default for me. Once you're happy with the result, go into your Shields and Letters composite shot on the tab below, and then select the gear to the left, and we're going to change the size of this shot. We're going to go ahead and add 1000 pixels to the width and the height, just because we don't want our glow to be cut off when we import it into shots. Click the composite shot 1 tab and do the same thing with its resolution. Change the width to 2080 and the height to 2080. Now this may make your energy distortion look a little weird, so go ahead and adjust that as needed. Once you're satisfied with your shield, let's go to export and do export in and out. Now from here, make sure your composite shot one is the thing you are rendering. And then I like personally rendering stuff with alpha channels into an image sequence. This basically renders each frame into a folder as its own picture, but it allows you to keep the alpha channel if you choose PNG and the file size is significantly lower than a video with an alpha channel. So once you've created your image sequence, you can go ahead and import it into some footage you want to edit. Let's take a look at what some looks like. I opened up a new instance of Vegas FX and dragged and dropped some footage of my wife pretending she's holding one of the shields in there. I also went to file and imported the image sequence of the shield in here. When you import an image sequence, it turns it into a solid video file, so it's really easy to work with. I then tracked my wife's hand to where I wanted the shield to be, and then I adjusted the scale as needed. You can add rotation scale and anything you wanted on there to make it look good. And then after that, I went ahead and added some motion blur, and this is what the rough outcome looked like. So that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, again, this is a very customizable shield. It's a real fun effect to make. You can adjust a lot of different things. You can add like emblems in the center. You can adjust the glow intensity. You can adjust rotation and all sorts of different uh, displacements on it. And it's just a really fun effect to do that you can customize a lot. I just showed you the core concept of how to make the shield. And, you know, it's kind of like building blocks. You just kind of go from there. So if you want, maybe you can shoot a like down there. That'll really help me out. Maybe even subscribe if you wanted to, because I have a lot more Vegas FX tutorials and Vegas Pro tutorials on my channel, Scrapyard Films. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next video. And I'd like to give a special shout out to my super patrons, HPL Gamers and LMC.